Hey, and welcome back to another Revit video. This is technically part two of splitting columns by levels. And in this video, we're going to be organizing all of these columns that we've split in the previous video so we can easily manage those as they change. A lot of times you'll have multiple different columns that you need to change or edit or at least track or be able to reference in real time and see do I have the right size? Is it in the right place? Is it performing correctly? So we're gonna do all of that with a column schedule. So I have all these columns. I'm not gonna do anything else to these columns. If you missed part one, go see that. That will be in the link below. Go see that first. It'll show you how to get to this point, whether you have four columns that you need to split by level or 100 in this case. From here, we are going to go to the Manage tab I'm sorry, the view tab, because we want to create a schedule. We'll go to the view tab, we'll go to schedules, schedule quantities, and I want to name this structural column schedule. You can name it whatever you want. Structural column schedule, and in the category, I'm gonna go down to, you guessed it, structural columns. Yes, we'll hit okay. Now, the most important part here is the column location mark. And what that is, it's the grid intersections between two different grids, A and one in this case, the intersection will be A1. And so that's really important as far as tracking all of these columns throughout this schedule. And if you remember the way we originally set this up was we placed all the columns at the grid intersection. Generally speaking, this is where you will have these columns placed. So it's a good point to start with the column location mark. From there, we need a base level. We, we wanna know where these columns are individually starting. And also in this case, I wanna have a base offset. And for the organization of this schedule, I wanna put the offset just above that. And you'll see all, all of this visually in just a second after we're all set up. And from there, I will use a top level because again, we need to know where these columns are starting and ending. I'll place that there and then have the top offset after the top level. So that's all we need to start out for the column schedule. I'll hit OK, and we have every column. And it's kind of a mess, and I can't say that this is a great way of organizing columns, at least right now. So let's better organize this schedule. I like freezing the headers and striping the rows so you can see every other row is striped. It's very easy. Now I wanna go to sorting, and how do I wanna sort? Well, I want to sort by that column location mark, which is the grid intersections. And in this case, I'll set a blank line. I'll put this actually as a header because I don't necessarily need this column to be shown all the time. I just wanna see where these grid line intersections are. And at this point, I will then, I actually want to use the base level then to sort, and I wanna use descending. I wanna use descending just so it puts the column at the highest level on top as if it were organized like a building and you're looking at it in 3D, but even though it's a schedule. All of that makes sense. I wanna make sure I still continue to check every item and I wanna see every instance because that's exactly the point of splitting them all. We wanna see everything and be able to manage them all at the same time. Now formatting, again, I said that we don't want to necessarily see the column location mark, but I have a header. So I can go into the column location mark and hide that. I don't need to see that at all. And from there, I'll hit OK. And from here you can see, now I have all of these columns scheduled and ordered by grid line location. It begins to be very easy to see where all these columns are. So if I go to a plan view, you can see I have A and 1. So A1 is right there. And that is the intersection and point to which all of these columns are located. So if I select, if I go to 3D and I actually select all of these columns, I'll do that first, I can see all of those columns at grid line intersection A1 are highlighted there. And so the real, the real power of this schedule is I can easily see if I have an offset, a base offset, as in if it's going below the level line, I could see the actual base level that this column is associated to all the way up at that location. The same as the top, I could see the top constraint, and then if there's a top offset. 
again this is very nice very easy to see and organize and if I've, I received the question if you have a few columns and they're all the same size do you need to split them and organize them of course not you don't need to the reason we're doing this is if you might have a complex building with multiple different types of columns especially columns that split and change dimensions as they go up the building so I want to now show why I want to make this schedule. Now we've made the schedule, we can organize it. Well, let's see the organization in action. Well, maybe I have all the building columns, all these columns here. Maybe they need to be larger down below. Like, well, okay, uh, one quick way I can get to that point is to go to the column schedule and all the columns that go from level one to two, I can change the type. And that's actually one thing I did not add yet because we, we actually can see the columns, but we don't know what they are. So let's go back to the fields and you could do family and type or just type. It doesn't necessarily matter, but I'm gonna do family and type so we can see the type of column that it is as well as the type or size that it's set at as well. So finally we can see that I have all these different columns here and you can see the type as well. This is the this is the important part. I'm actually going to split these up so we could see them just a little bit better. I want to use family by itself and then type family and then down here type. So now we can see the family and then the type that it is. And from here, like I said before, let's change the size of some of these base levels and the first few levels in this case to make them a bit larger. So in this case, I can quickly do it from the schedule. It's a matter of just simply changing the type here. Because I have smaller sizes loaded, I can actually do the reverse. And so maybe I want to start at the top and say, oh, these, these levels at, at these higher levels, the size of these columns are not as large. So let's change these to different sizes. And I'll do this in a, a few different locations so we could see this. So now I've changed the top three levels from a 24 by 30 to a 12 by 18 at grid line intersection A1 and 2. So let's go to 3D and we can clearly see A1 and 2, these column sizes are changed at those particular levels. So this becomes a great tool. This entire schedule becomes a great tool to utilize all of these minute changes that you might have in columns as projects progress. This is something you're wanting to start with early in a project in case columns change because I guarantee you they will. If you have a complex project that has this many columns or even even 20 columns that have that change sizes, you're going to want to be able to track the different column sizes per level so you can easily make the changes per level. And again, you don't have to have it set per level because maybe there's an offset per level or in a particular place. So let's say that I have an offset in all of these garage columns, the top of all these garage columns, because they're going to stop at a level. Maybe I want them to extend above to where you might have a parapet or just some rails that extend. So maybe I want to set this top offset to 3.5, have that three and a half feet. And so if we go back to the schedule, we can clearly see where these offsets begin. And that's at all these different grid line intersections at the top level in the garage. All these garage levels have a top that is three and a half feet higher. Now, something else, one final thing I like to insert into this schedule as far as organization goes is a conditional format. And a conditional format that's geared towards pointing out offsets. So if I'm just scrolling here, I don't, I may not see that I have the, all these offsets for these columns set at three and a half feet, but maybe I want a better way to have that jump out at me or so I can see that better. One way we can do that is if we go to the formatting tab, I can click on base offset and go to conditional format. And then what I want to test for in this case is not equal to zero. So if I don't have an offset, I don't really care. I don't want it to jump out at me. So at this point, all I need to do is set the background to whatever I want. And maybe we'll just make it this red so it easily jumps out. 
I'll hit OK. And I want to do the same thing for the top offset so I can see if I have any top offsets. Again, conditional formatting, we're testing if it's not equal to zero. And I'll change that background color to red. I'll hit OK and OK. And as I scroll, I can see I have all of these different conditional formats where I have these base offset and top offset values that are not zero. And again, we just changed the top of these garage columns to have an offset of three and a half feet for a parapet or whatever it might be. So now we can easily see where all of these garage columns are and what they're doing. And just like that, I can change any of these offsets to anything, anything. It could be absolutely anything. And the second that value is not zero, the conditional formatting will kick in and I get that background color of red. And again, this is very nice because maybe someone in the project accidentally adds an offset to, to this column here. And maybe it's just a quarter of an inch, just the tiniest thing you would never see in the column in 3D. But you can clearly see on the schedule, one, it jumps out at you. And number two, it's really clear that it's not zero. And you know, the, of course, the thing you want to do is change it to zero. And the second it does, my formatting is changed. The conditional formatting does not kick in anymore. One final thing to remember with schedules is that you can now zoom in. If you hold control and scroll in, you can zoom. This is very nice and new in Revit 2020. You can easily manage all of these columns in one place. It's not difficult at all. You could have column sizes changing left and right, and all you have to do is go to that particular grid line intersection, go to that specific column at whichever level. You can change the type of column it is to a different, completely different family. You can change the type itself. It, it's very easy to start to organize all of these columns in, using a column schedule to track where they are, what they're doing, and way, the way they're performing. So I hope you learned something. If you did, please demolish that like button. That really helps me a lot. Also subscribe. That also helps. Please stick around for other videos. I have a lot more coming out in the future. Hope you see you in the next one and have a wonderful day.